morning. My name is Susan McDonald. I work here at the center. I was able to say hello to some of you as you were coming in, but many of you arrived at the same time, so I wasn't able to say hello to all of you. So let me take this moment to welcome each and every one of you on behalf of the Cranert Center for the Performing Arts. We're just delighted to have you with us this morning to see this very special production. One of the reasons it's very special for us is that a number of the young authors are from East Central Illinois. How many of you participated in the writing contest the News Gazette and I sponsored last spring for, called Kids for President? Let me see your hands. Well, it's about two-thirds of the audience. So you know what this show is about. Now, I see some empty seats here. That means that one of the classes with a winning young author in it isn't here yet. Yes, it is? Okay, well, we'll wait then while they come down. I was going to say we can't wait for them because you guys all got here on time, and we're going to start. But well, let's just move that class in very quickly. While they're getting settled, would you tell me how many of you are very first-time visitors to the Cranert Center? Could I see your hands? Well, that's quite a few of you. Well, welcome those of you that are here for the very first time. We're just delighted to have you with us and hope that you'll come back again. Charlie, are we seating the rest of them in the balcony? Okay, great. How many of you have been here at least twice before? Oh, boy, that's almost everybody else in the audience. Well, good, you can put your hands down. So you know what to expect when you come to a live performance here at the Cranert Center. So if you will join me in welcoming Child's Play Touring Theater, we'll begin this production of Kids for President.
My name is Michael, and this is the Child's Play Touring Theater. We live in Chicago, Illinois, and we perform stories and poems written by children, just like you. In fact, that first song was written by two children, two, two students, Emma Duque, a seventh grader from Chicago, and Ann Barrett from Chatsworth, Pennsylvania. She's a fifth grader there. What you are going to see today is a brand new special show called Kids for President. Over the past presidential campaign year, Child's Play has collected thousands of stories and poems, campaign speeches, and rap songs about kids with their ideas uh, of how America would be run if kids were in charge. The show you're going to see today is made up of the very best of these young writers' efforts, plus Kids' writings from right here in Champaign, Illinois! Yay! Now I'd like to introduce to you the actors of the Child's Play Touring Theater, standing on your left, the lovely and talented Tara Davis. stuff too. So, vote for me! M-E! Me! Kathy! Is this song?
is equal to the remaining sides. Please, vote for me! Whoop speed. Woo. When we get there, the Martians, ooh, they would be mad. Ooh. And they would, they would come out there and start shooting us. And then we would try to get back in the spaceship and try to go back to Earth, but the Martians, they would come out to us. Ah. Then they would start shooting at us and they would try to kill us. Then I would call the ship and say, lost the ship's torpedoes, lost the ship torpedoes. So the slow them marshes down. But ooh, that would make them marshes mad. And they would try to kill us some more. But then we would get the ship, we get back to Earth. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the rioters were trying to overthrow the president. Who is me? So the riders were trying to get in the White House. They would ride us and go, hush, 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 way at, hush, 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 way at, way at. We will get that boy. Oh, oh, oh. So then I would run downstairs to the basement of the White House. Ah. Then I would hide us some old blankets. I would stay there for hours. It seemed like minutes. Ah. Then the riders would come downstairs to the basement. Hush, 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 way at, way at, hush, hush, hush. Then they would find me on the blankets. Ah. And they would start shaking me and calling my name. Oh, 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 oh. Then I would wake up in my own bed and my mom would be standing up and be saying, Paul? Paul? What's
what's the matter, Paul? You were yelling. And I would say, nothing, mama. It was just a bad dream. Then I would say under my breath, boy, do I hate politics. Then. Something to say, and I make it quick. I just command the world, and it makes me sick. Republicans, Democrats, they're both the same. If you ask us, they're both lame. All the wars that go on, all the drugs and disarray, the crime rates climbing higher. I think kids should have a say. Kids for president, we won't be the same. No more no, no, kids for president. We can run the game. So when the problems throw their hands into the ring, they don't know any better than just to mock.
Me, father of the Hey, 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 hey look, look, it's a quail. Hide behind this bush. Granny kept chasing other animals all over the forest. To, to eat. Very, come on Freddy. over. Hey, look, a partridge in a pear tree. Away you go. Gave up his lead there. So all the animals got together. I don't know what they are. And voted, voted the lion to, to be the best leader. But Lily would have to find a way to make the walks more fun. Hmm. She decided to teach them a new song on every one of their walks. Great idea. There she comes, just a walking down the street singing to do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Snapping her fingers and stumping her feet, singing do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. The end. She looks at the end. But a lot of kids, and especially kids from right here in the Champaign County area, had some really inventive solutions for how we might fix these environmental problems. Blake Brown from the Wiley School wrote a story called, If I Could Change the World. If I could change the world, I would make a club. It would be called the Environment Club. And the only people who could be in the club were people who loved the world. We would go walking through the city and clean up people's yards. Then the city people tried to give us money. Well, you're doing a beautiful job. Here, here's $5. Well, we said, we don't want your money. We don't need any money. We just want the world to be a nice and clean place for everyone in the world. That is so nice. The end. Okay, 
that's pretty much of a quorum. I think we're ready. The next play is called Our Man. It's by Christopher Fulton, who's a sixth grader from Glenview, Illinois. And uh, it's about a superhero who has all the environmental solutions.
This next song were written by Mark Cinder, who's a sixth grader at the St. Matthew School right in Champaign. 
Everyone sees the White House in the private plane. But nobody shares the president's heartache and pain. Would you wake with a smile on your face when you find taxes, unemployment, and drugs are a national? disgrace The country is in chaos and there is crime on your streets and your environment's being polluted by huge oil leaks Need I go on America's problem are great It must be hard to keep the U.S. of A top Could I do it Be president You see Say can you see I have good ideas Why not choose Why me Why not choose me To run the race written by someone from right here in Champaign. But guess what? We have a whole list of people, of things, people who are here today, right in this very audience, who wrote stuff that we have performed already today. Those people are, dun, 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 dun. Nathaniel McCauley and Imran Rashid from Bottenville School. Blake Brown from the Wiley School. For you guys, we have certificates of creativity that we like to give you because your stories and your poems were so wonderful that we were able to use them. And remember, your names will be said all over the US because we're using your stories. So Blake Brown, Imran Rashid, and Nathaniel McCauley, here are your certificates of, certificates of creativity, wonderful stories. Take a big ball. Thank you. Yes, come on. Okay, for our next piece, I need to find a helper. I can only pick people who are not talking and who are sitting all the way down in their seats. Okay.
Yeah, like um, tell um people like to clean up the earth and not to um like um, I would like tell people um like um like tell like people like to go not take guns and like shoot people and like um that we like don't need cops or not that we wouldn't have bad things in our earth. Oh, that is so wonderful, Jeremy. That's
on the road for us tonight, renewed fighting in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And then.
Because as president, it is my job to do this. Because millions and millions of people, even kids, are going to die from AIDS. Unless we start spending money on finding a cure. Jeffrey Pop, a first grader from Chicago, Illinois, says, if I were president, I would give money to the poor so they can buy clothes and houses and everything they need to stay healed from their hurt. Jennifer Carter, age seven from Lake Forest, Illinois, says, if I were president, I would help the homeless. I would make sure their children could go to school so they could learn, and then if they could learn, they could make money, and then when they make money, they could buy houses, and then they won't be homeless anymore. Maria Gillespie, State College, Pennsylvania. Another help of mine is to stop people from thinking that other people with a different color skin are not important or should not be cared about. Many people suffer from this attitude. I believe that all people should be treated the same. Holly Dash, age 12 and a half, from Kennedy Square, Pennsylvania, says, just seeing what happened in LA really gets to me. I thought prejudice was over. If Dr. Martin Luther King were alive today, he would be ashamed. Yes, I do have a dream, that one day we can live up to our country's name and be the United States of America. Some of the most interesting and scary writing we got from kids was their vision of the future of America. Caesar Alsop from Baird, Delaware writes, when I am 35, I think everyone will be wearing toxic suits. All the water will be dried up and there will be trash all over the streets. The only weather will be thunderstorms and there will be a fire almost every day and they will last for months. Everybody will be wearing gas masks. Bit by bit, the world will start to disappear. They will try to ruin space too. Josh Fishdale from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. People say that the end of the world is coming, but I hope it is not, because I want to live a long life and be happy. Uh, I don't want to be anyone special, just have a wife, a nice home, and some kids. One of my favorite things that I read was by five-year-old Marcus Jordan. He says, if nobody fights, I would be giving them stickers. And if people don't bite or kill, I'd give them a crown. And what does the world mean to Shonda Counts, a second grader from White Plains, New York? She wrote a poem called What the World Means to Me. I know my house world and my school world, and I love them. I know what's going on in the rest of the world because I see it on the news and on TV. I like to know what's going on, so I watch them. You big grown-ups make the world sound like a horrible place. Little kids like me get scared. No matter. I still love the world, and I hope the future will be good. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for
Thank you very much, Child's Play Touring Theater, and thank you very much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and that you'll come back and see us again. To make it easier to leave, we're going to start down front, where the people have been sitting the longest, and move to the back. If you will wait until an usher comes by your row to dismiss you, that would be real helpful. In the balcony, we'll start in the first row and move back. Thanks again for coming, and please come see us again. Will the ushers come forward, please? <laughs>